Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to be making my very first card with you. And I'm excited because I just purchased and replaced my die cutting and embossing machine and I purchased the new Spell Binders Platinum 6 and I love it so far. I'm really enjoying it. So in this video, I need to create a get well card. So I thought I would just press record and take you along with me. So I'm going to be starting with a simple panel and I am going to be using 80 pound cardstock for the panel. I have trimmed this to four and a quarter by five and a half, but I will be further trimming this down after I do some ink blending. So before I do that, I'm just going to place it on my glass mat here. That way I can use my mat to just help with blending the ink. I'm actually just gonna do one color of blending, but I have my little card panel there, and then I'm going to be doing some stenciling. So I will be sure to link all of the materials that you see that will bring this card together in that description box below, but I'm gonna do this really, really pretty lined stencil. It's got some neat diagonal lines, and that is the exact size of an A2 card, which is really nice because you can then line it up really, really well. So I'm just going to line that up over my panel, tape the sides down, that way they don't shift while moving. I've heard you can also use Pixie Spray to help temporarily lay down your stencil, but I'm just gonna be using the tape. Okay, so I have my stencil over my card panel, and then I'm gonna be using the Lawn Fawn plastic flamingo color to do some ink blending and we're just going to make a really pretty background here. Okay so I have my ink cube here. I'm going to be grabbing one of my blending brushes and then I'm just going to tap some ink onto my bristles here and then I'm just going to pat some of that off that way it's not so dark when I start. And then I'm simply going to go um, from the sides to the paper and then just start blending my color onto the paper. Grabbing a little bit more of the ink and then just going in some simple little circular motions to get some nice color onto the paper there. Grabbing a little bit more of the ink. It's so pretty. Okay, tapping a little bit off and then just coming in from that stencil. I like to kind of start on the stencil material and then, you know, blend towards the paper. That way, if you have a little too much ink or any splotching, then it kind of does it on the stencil part and not on the project. It's looking good. Got a little bit more ink. And you can just go as heavy handed if you want. If you want to be a little bit more bold, you can do nice and light. I have it going pretty, pretty light, but you can always add more. So if you start a little bit with a lighter hand and then, you know, realize that you want to do a little bit more of a heavy hand, then that's a better way to go than going in too bold in the beginning and then thinking it's a little too much. Okay, grabbing a little bit more of the ink. I'm just gonna get that a little bit bolder. And then we should be all good. I'm liking how that looks. Okay. I think I like that. Fixing any little areas that I think need to be evened out. And it doesn't have to be perfect because as long as you like the color and there we go, I think that looks really good. Okay, so then I'm just going to place my little cap here, put this away. And then the best thing about these glass mats is that you can just simply wipe. All done. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take off the stencil. I can save my tape as long as I didn't get any ink on it. That way I don't want to mess up my next. Ooh. That looks so neat. So let me hold that up. Um, as long as I didn't get too much ink on my tape to where it would, you know, smudge my next little part of my project. But there we go. And there is our little background panel. I love it. 
I think that looks really, really neat. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and trim this down. I'm going to grab some, some of my A2 layer dies and we'll just trim this down to the right size. So I have this little A2 layers die set and I've really enjoyed it. So you can, again, this is already trimmed down to five and a half by four and a quarter, so an A2 size card, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim that down even further. And I really like, I think I really like how that looks. And the best thing is you can kind of, you know, hold them up and experiment if you wanna go bigger or smaller in terms of the size of your panel. And actually, I think I might go one smaller. I think I like how that looks. Okay, so let me, I'm just gonna tape this down. I'm gonna open up my embossing and die cutting machine here. Get my little layers ready to go. That way I can just layer it right on here. Okay, I'm just gonna run this through. Okay, so then I'm just gonna place a little bit of tape on there. Okay. And then I'm just gonna put it through at a little bit of an angle there just so it goes through the machine a little bit nicer. Okay, and then we'll just trim this panel down. There we go. Oh, that went through really, really nice. Okay, so there we go. And now we have our panel trimmed down. Ooh, that looks really, really nice, okay. Make sure I get this tape off nicely. And... Okay, so here is the final size of our little panel that will go on the front of our card. So we have our little background panel done. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna bring out my Misty and I'm gonna start stamping and we'll get the next little part done. I'm really excited to show you the stamp set I'm gonna use for this project. And really quickly, I'm just gonna grab my little stamp chamois and wipe off my stencil here. Get it all cleaned off front and back so it is ready for next time there we go looks nice okay okay so i'm just going to stick with the 80 pound card stock that i used for the front panel and i'm going to use that again for doing the stamping and the little embellishments parts of this card and i'll link the card stock that i've really fallen in love with in the description box below so I am going to be using this cute stamp set. I also am going to be using the coordinating dies. It's a little get well soon. I'll link it below as well. It's really cute. It has a little get well soon sentiment, a little medicine bottle, and then a cute little chick with a cute little um, nurse cap and a little band-aid. So sweet. And again, I'm going to use the coordinating dies as well. So I'm going to use the medicine bottle and the band-aid, and then later we'll come back for the get well soon because I'm going to do some heat embossing with that little sentiment. So I'm just going to grab the medicine bottle, the band-aid, and I'm going to stamp that onto my paper here. Now I'm going to actually do some simple coloring next. So I'm going to stamp this a couple times just in case I accidentally make a mistake. That way I know that I have some extras just in case. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, just close that door and grab those little pieces. Okay, that looks good. Make sure this is all... Where it needs to be okay and then i'm going to be using some some memento uh, tuxedo black ink and stamp that down move my panel out of the way because that would be just like me to accidentally get it smudged at this point okay so i got some ink on there let's see how that first impression goes stamp that down simple simple perfect okay so i'm gonna really quickly just stamp the other side that way i have again just a couple extras just in case i make a boo-boo on my coloring it's easier to do it now and i can also use these extras later because you know quite often we need get well cards Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to just take these out, clean off my little stamps really quickly here, and we will do some simple coloring. Just go ahead and grab these off. Okay. 
Okay, so I am going to be doing just some simple coloring here. And you can approach coloring in any way that you wish. So some people like to start with their light colors and go dark, then some others like to do the complete opposite. I grabbed a little variety of colors that I want to work with today. I have some mints, a pink, a couple grays, and a couple little tans or beiges. And I just picked colors that I thought would look good for this project. I personally have found, as I am starting to play around with alcohol markers and coloring, that I like to start with the light and transition into the dark and then bring my light back in once more. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the band-aid and I am going to bring in two colors, a brick beige and then I'm going to do a sand white and I'll link my markers down below. So it has a fine tip or a brush tip. I'm going to go ahead and use the brush for this and actually I'm going to start with my lighter color. Excuse me. So let's see brush starting with my lighter color. Now, again, you can do whichever that you like. That is my lighter one, yep, okay. You can do whatever you would like. Honestly, if your project turns out the way you want it to and you feel confident while you're doing your coloring, then that is the right answer for you. There are so many different ways that people approach the coloring portion that you can't go wrong. As long as it works for you, then do it how you wish. So I'm just gonna go and apply a light layer over with this first lighter of the two colors. Okay. And I really liked that color for the band-aid. And then I'm going to go back in with the fine tip of my darker color. And actually I'm going to use the brush again. And I'm just going to add a little bit of shadowing. So I'm going to go kind of on the left, kind of bring it down towards the bottom. Same with that middle band-aid portion. And then same with the sides. And approach your shading any way that you like to do it. And then, so I'm just bringing some dark in for some shading. I'm going to go back in with my light, with my brush tip, and I'm just going to kind of pull some of that dark into the light. Just kind of blend it, blend it through. And there we go. That's what I'm gonna do with that. That looks good to me. You can add as much or as little, but I like how that looks. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the little prescription bottle here. I'm gonna start with the label. So again, I'm gonna bring in two of the mint colors. I have the lighter, which we're gonna start with is the green shadow, and then horizon green is the darker of the two. So I'm gonna actually use the fine point for this, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start by adding onto my label, just a nice light mint. Again, starting with my lighter color, it's what works for me. And then I, I was actually really surprised at how relaxing this part of the process was. I thought that the coloring was going to be the part that stressed me out the most. And honestly, it's the part that I'm enjoying the most, if that makes sense. Okay, then I'm going to grab my darker of the two. Again, I'm going to use that fine point side and then I'm just going to add a little bit. I'm going to go in from the left and just really bring in that darker color. Okay, I really, really like that. Then I'm going to grab my lighter color once more. This time I'm going to grab the brush and then again, I'm just going to kind of get that transition in there and pull that dark to the light. And then that's my final, final look. I really like how that looks. Okay, for the heart, I'm just using one color. We're keeping it simple. I'm just using a color called pink. Simple coloring, simple color name, and we're just gonna really quickly add a little pink to that heart, and then we'll move on to the grays. I'm gonna keep the actual bottle white. I just like how it looks, but I'm gonna use some nice grays for the cap. I have two different colors here, a neutral gray two and a neutral gray five. So again, starting with the lighter of the two, I'm going to use the fine tip and I'm going to just apply a light layer right over the entire cap. Okay, going back through with my darker, I think I'll use the fine tip once more. And again, I'm going to do the same thing that I did on that label because obviously your shadows need to 
do the same thing on one object. So I'm gonna go in with that dark, grab my brush tip on my lighter one, and then I'm just going to bring that transition in, smooth it out. And that is exactly what I wanted. I love it, oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna put my markers away. I had so much fun with that. Okay, and then I'm going to bring back in my die cutting machine and we are going to use the little coordinating dies to cut these out. So bringing back in my die cutting plates. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna place these down and then I'm going to, you know what? I have a little smudge from my ink here. I'm going to grab my colorless blender. I have a little bit where it's kind of running off the side. The ink kind of ran out of the line. I'm just going to kind of push that back in. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay, so I think that that fixed that a little bit. And now I'm going to take my little dies and I'm just gonna place them around my image, being really careful to line it up. Okay, there we go. I love having a stamp set that has the coordinating dies. Now you do purchase them separately, so it's nice because you do have the option if you want to do it or not. But I have honestly found that every time I buy a stamp set that I grab the dies as well because they're just so worth it. They are worth it. Now, of course, there's gonna be some times where the stamps are like easy shapes where you can just fussy cut really easily. But also I kind of feel like, um, I don't know, the dies just do such a nice polished job. There we go. And we are all set. Oh my gosh, so cute. Here's our little pieces. We have our little Band-Aid and we have our little medicine bottle. Okay, so really quickly, let's go ahead and grab our stamps one more time. And we are going to do some heat embossing. So I have some gold embossing powder and I think that that would look really, really pretty for the little get well soon sentiment. So let's go ahead and get that all stamped and ready to emboss. Okay, coming in once more again with that 80 pound card stock and I'm just gonna place that right back into my Misty and then I'm gonna grab my sentiment. Again, get well soon. There's also a coordinating um, exclamation point but I'm not gonna use that. You can go ahead and do that if you'd wish but I'm gonna do mine without the punctuation and I'm just gonna place that on my paper there Close my door, grab my stamp, okay, reposition. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my little anti-static tool and I'm just going to apply some of that powder over my paper. So this just removes any static, that way the embossing powder only sticks where there is the glue, okay. That way you don't have embossing powder all over your paper and you get a nice clean impression. So then I'm gonna go ahead and take my Versamark and I'm going to stamp down on my stamp. Get it all coated well. Okay. And then press. Hopefully we get a good press the first time. Pulling that back up, I'm gonna double check it, and it looks good. Now you can't see it because it's clear, but I'm double checking it and it looks really nice. Okay, I'll clean that off in just a moment. We'll get this out of the way, and then I'm going to do my embossing powder. Grabbing a sheet of paper, I learned this on Kathy Zilski's channel. I'll link her channel down below. She has an amazing channel. And she puts a piece of paper underneath her embossing powder during this part to collect all of the extra. That way you can just funnel it really quickly back into the little container. And I also learned um, she does a little paper, or not a paper clip, a clothespin on the side as well, just to kind of help her hold during the um, application of the powder but also during the embossing part so I developed that into my workflow as well and I like I like that a lot okay just 
applying a generous amount of embossing powder. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for just a second. This is the gold tinsel color from Ranger, and I'm just gonna tap that off. Okay, that looks really good. I have a couple little flecks that I need to get rid of, but before I do that, I'm going to then take my embossing powder and put all of the extra right back in. Just like that. Save it all. Okay, so we're good to go there. Just gonna wipe up any excess. And we'll be ready to go. I picked up these tiny little eyeshadow brushes at Dollar Tree recently. I really liked the fine angled tip and they actually came pink like this. So don't worry, I'm not putting pink eyeshadow on or anything, but I thought I'd pick these up for my craft room because I thought it would help with this part. So if you see any loose glitter or embossing powder, then you can just kind of brush that away. That way you don't emboss little loose flecks. So I'm just gonna brush any little extras away that I see. That looks perfect. Okay, so here we go. There is our embossing powder, nice and glittery, and now we're going to heat it. So it gives a really nice raised look. It's a little hard to appreciate on camera, but oh, it's so pretty there. You can kind of get a, just a little idea of what it does. It's so pretty and it's dimensional. I love it. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of sentiment dies and we'll cut this out. Now you could absolutely just fussy cut this out or use your paper trimmer. I am going to grab this little die set that's made for the little sentiments and doing little greetings. I added this to my collection and I love it. So I'm just gonna add a little die right around there. I'm just gonna grab some of my extra tape. You can see how you can grab just a little piece of tape in the beginning and then just use it for most of your project. So I have a little piece of scrap tape there. Again, I'm gonna angle that going into my machine just so it kind of helps it go through without too much noise and cracking. Okay, okay, like that. Okay, now I will just run that through my machine and we will start constructing and putting this card together because we are all set with all of our little embellishments we are good to go okay that was beautiful so grab this out ah oh, perfect the best thing about die cutting for me there are so many wonderful things, but for me, the thing that makes me just go, ooh, is the little beveled edges. I don't know if you can see, but if you do die cutting on um, well, a little die cutting machine like this, you know that, that those nice pressed edges are just, they just give you all the hard eyes. They're so pretty. It makes it look so professional and polished. I love it. Okay, so we have our little sentiment. We have our cute little embellishments let's bring in our card base now my card base is 110 pound again i'll link that card stock down below and i'm simply going to start by putting some foam tape on the back of my panel and i'm going to pop that up off of the front here okay so i am going to add a few strips to the back here and we'll get that to have a nice raised dimensional look to start off building our card. I'm giving plenty so that we don't have any bowing in the middle of our card. Okay, grabbing little strips off, little strips off, little strips off, and let's start building this card. Okay. 
so. And you can decide at this point which way you want it to go. You could have it go this way. Actually, I think it kind of is the, I like how that looks, I think. Or do I want it to go this way? I think I might want it to go this way. Okay, so I'm just going to center that. Use any alignment grids or tools that you would like to do this part. I visually do it. And that looks really nice. Okay, there we go. So there, it's right there. Okay, now I am going to grab some additional pieces of um, foam dots and I'm gonna pop these off of the surface. So I think I'm gonna do the get well here and then I'm going to have the little medicine bottle here and the Band-Aid here. So let's get some more adhesive dots and then we'll add some fun additional embellishments as well. Okay, so I have a lot of adhesive on the back of these. I'm just gonna tape this down. That way we can kind of work with it being nice and square there. Now what I'm gonna do is I think I want, so I have my little adhesive dots on the back here that will that way that will bump that up I also have this with some raised adhesive dots but I want to have the prescription bottle I'm just gonna glue that to the back panel because I want it to kind of be layered in um, you know a couple different sources of dimension there so I'm going to grab my tweezers and let's add a little bit of glue to the back of this little cutie pie. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this art glitter glue and add some glue to the back. And it just takes a little bit, just teeny tiny. Okay. So now, in fact, I wanna do this. I think I want this to be right here. Oop, did my little panel move? Okay. I think right there with an ever so slight little tilt. Well, that's a pretty substantial tilt, but you know what I mean. Okay. And then I'm going to retake that down a little bit. And I'll do long ways there. Okay. So now let's bring in the other embellishments. Okay, so I wanna take off the little pieces off the back here. Okay. And then I want the get well soon to be, yeah, a little bit more left justified. but also somewhat center there. Okay, I think that looks good, like that. Okay, and let's do our little Band-Aid. Again, I did some dots there, just to build that up just a tad. And we're gonna do a little angle just like so for this one. And I like the idea of this being on the bottom, my sentiment overlapping this, and then my Band-Aid overlapping the sentiment just a little bit. Just get, makes it kind of all come together a little bit. And it just makes it a little bit more harmonious. It's all working together. Okay, let's add a little bit of bling and fun embellishment. So I have these little clear dew drops, if you will. They're really neat. I need to get some of the little trays to contain them while I'm working, which are on their way as we speak, but I'm just gonna place these on my mat here and get some placed onto my card. Okay, I'm just gonna grab this little picker upper tool here and get the little sizes that I want actually. And it comes with a variety of sizes, which is super nice. And then just kind of get an idea for where I want to go with this. So I'm thinking maybe three up here, around there, okay. Okay. 
Okay, and then we'll do two down at the bottom. And again, approach this any way you'd like. I'm just here to inspire and have fun, but I like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in some glue, and we will get all of these placed. So now when you add the glue, it kind of gives it a little bit more of a foggy look, but it's still really, really, really neat. Even though this glue dries clear, it gives it just a tad more of a foggy look, even after it's dry. Okay, and it's just the tiniest, tiniest bit of glue that's needed. And we'll just lay those down. Okay, there we go, and then I'll place the others. Okay, finishing off the last two, and I think that looks so cute. It was just the perfect final little touch, I think, just to bring that all together. So that is my final card. How sweet did that turn out? I love it. Okay, so here is my final card. I have quite the mess on my little craft desk here, but honestly, I am really excited. This is the very first card that I have made. I have been really excited to get into the world of stamping, die cutting, coloring, ink blending, all of the things, embossing, all of, all of it. And honestly, I'm really excited about how the first little card turned out. And I think that the person I'm giving this to is going to love it as well. So I really enjoyed creating this for you. Thanks for being patient with me as I patiently created this video for you and patiently am learning along the way on how I want to really build my skill with this and just have fun with it more importantly. But thanks for watching. I can't wait to bring more fun inspiration in terms of of cards to you on this channel and I will see you all in the next video.